Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Ask Dr. Bob. Some very good questions, and I do appreciate all the questions that are coming through. We had an individual that asked about hyperthyroidism and what might be the cause and how can it be treated and how it impacts the metabolism. You know, I had a gentleman one time that had hyperthyroidism that was caused by him eating Hostess Twinkies. And he went off the Hostess Twinkies and his thyroid went down. I really believe a gluten has an awful lot to do with hyperthyroid. Uh, gluten impairs the absorption of minerals and nutrients in the body. There are so many possibilities from stress, but a lot of times it's just poor dietary choices and people eating a lot of processed food. We just treat the numbers accordingly. Here's a question that was asked a week or so ago, and I wanted to go into more detail to the last part of the question. It was talking about in case there was a, a nuclear episode and would iodine make a difference. But the question went on to how does this type of, of uh, radiation affect someone with no thyroid? Well, let me put it to you like this. Any kind of radiation exposure to your body is going to impact all the cells everything's going to be impacted and you're going to be altering normal cell function. The question is iodine. What I'm just learning and seeing and reading over time, you know we had that major episode over in Japan some time ago and it's starting to show up on the northwest part and the west part of the United States. You know, would, be take, would taking iodine make a difference? It can't hurt. Would chlorella help? Probably. Does not having or having a thyroid make any difference? Probably not, because every part of your body is going to be impacted. Will it impact people more that have a thyroid? Probably, because I know that iodine is important for the thyroid gland, but it's also important for breast, ovaries, and the prostate gland also. So, you know, iodine is a very important nutrient, and I hope that helps clarify what we are talking about. Someone had a question there about... Um, Five foot one, they're 47 years old. They would like to have um, some weight loss. They want to know what could be causing or preventing weight loss. This person also suggests that they're, they're hungry, but nothing sounds appetizing. It looks to me that at this time, um, they're at their lowest point of 100 pounds. So I have found that any time that somebody wants to lose weight, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make one comment. It's usually they are eating too much, but the thyroid has to be checked. And I also check the adrenal gland, because if your cortisol level is up, that will also prevent losing weight. Now, let's say you want to gain weight. You know, gaining weight is very interesting. This person has lost a taste for food. You know, that could be from a lot of reasons, but I know digestive enzymes would help. Maybe you have a high thyroid gland. So... I would suggest that you might want to focus on eating avocados and maybe almonds and foods like nuts that have a lot more calories per gram of weight. And fat has nine versus typically a carb usually has around four. This is a very interesting question here. Uticaria, it's like raised areas in skin. This person has suffered with this for about 11 years. I've had five episodes. You know... Wheels, as we also call them, are possibly caused by adrenal gland um, that's being fatigued. See, adrenal gland makes natural cortisone. If you don't have enough cortisone, you're going to have these hyper areas that are raised. So uh, sometimes we see adrenal fatigue. Sometimes I've seen it actually in people who don't have enough calcium. So that's uticaria, chronic uticaria. I'm sure stress has a lot to do with it. Last question, what do you think of non-GMO coffee that has herbs that help increase your metabolism, green coffee, ginseng, and put in quote unquote natural ingredients? You know, I'm not saying you should or you shouldn't. This is to lose weight. The best way to lose weight is cut back on the amount of food that you're consuming. Logical. I would not eat a lot of carbs in the morning because you're going to crave sugars all day long. You have to move. You have to exercise. Anytime that somebody does a fad diet and anytime that somebody takes a chemical to speed the metabolism up, it might work short term, but the very best is exercise, eat green food, avoid those refined carbs that blast your sugar up early in the morning. This is a wonderful, very intense, a lot of great questions, wonderful questions. 
Uh, I'm Dr. Bob DiMaria with another episode of Ask Dr. Bob.